Hello, wherever you are in the world today, welcome to Beyond the Art in our series, The Stories That Carry Us. I'm your host, Craig Beaumont Flynn, a citizen of the Cherokee Nation and the Delaware Tribe of Indians. In each episode, we will discuss with various Native American artists, influencers, art leaders, and everyone in between their experiences, the communities they serve, and the translation and interpretation of the Native American art world today. Thank you for coming today and welcome to Beyond the Art. Today we have uh, Kristen Gentry, Tom Ferris, and Natalie Standy Cloud of The Collective Wisdom, a traveling exhibition of first American artists. Welcome to the show. Happy to be here. So, maybe collectively, <laughs> uh, each of you can tell me a little bit about your story, your participation in the collective wisdom, and what got you involved, and we'll just go from there. Why don't you go ahead and start, Tom? Uh, okay, a little bit about me. Um, I grew up um, the child of really passionate Native art collectors. Um, they've been collecting since before I was born, and so um, naturally I really hated it. Um, when I was a kid, I <laughs> really, like nobody likes what your parents are into when you're young. Right. Are being made to do something. Yeah. yeah. So, but fortunately, you know, I was around it enough, just really immersed in it. I finally started picking out things that I liked that were a little bit more my era of, of taste and um, really kind of just enjoyed it. And then I sort of lucked into a summer job at a small museum and found I had an aptitude for uh, the business side of it. And so I've worked on and off in uh, different museums or uh, native art retail capacities for about 20 years. And um, professionally as an artist, I've been doing it for about 10. And um, What medium do you create? Oh, that's a tough one. I, I just make weird stuff. That's oh, okay. the, it's the easiest thing for me to say. Just, <laughs> I, like I mean, it. I started off as painting. <laughs> But I, I'm, I dabble in just about everything, mostly because I really like to learn how to do stuff. So when I have an idea, I don't really want to be limited by what I make. Like, so if I have a really good idea, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, how do I make that? Uh, you know, like I have a really cool jewelry idea that I'm trying to, to find someone to help me sand cast, you know, so I'm slowly just kind of dabbling in everything. I, I, I will say I started as a painter primarily. Um, but uh, my dad is a really gifted um, woodworker, and so I learned a lot about that. So I had crazy ideas about making um, war clubs, incorporating vintage Pontiac hood ornaments. And so I started making war clubs, and now I kind of do a lot of that. And then I, <laughs> I did a whole car um, a couple of years ago. Wow. And so it's just it's whatever crazy idea I have. I try to I try to make it as close to what's in my head. Whatever house. the squirrels in your head are yeah. just turning and telling you. What tribe are you from? Uh, I'm Ota, Missouri, and Cherokee. Okay. Um, and as far as my connection to this show is, uh, it started off as really um, an informal gathering of, of artists. We would you know, just hang out and paint. Sometimes we would just put a whole bunch of canvases up, and people would just start painting. And then you'd just hop around, and people would add little things to them. And I have a couple of those pieces still in my house. They're kind of fun. They're a little bit chaotic, but... <laughs> um, So from that, it just sort of developed into, hey, we should make this a show. And then we just had a a really cool network of artists that all were, you know, never really, I don't think we ever started with the idea that it was going to be this, to where it was going to travel all over. We thought we were going to do like a show and put it up. And it's like, (laughs) oh my gosh, there's actually interest in this. So um, it's kind of grown into this thing. And uh, I think we've all been... um, a little surprised, but we're along for the ride, so it's kind of fun. But uh, I, I will let other people talk now. So was it a, a collaboration initially to get people just collaborating together from various mediums and as artistic uh, value to put into something? I mean, Well, like the informal side of it, like Tom said, it's just a lot of times like, hey, we're going to have dinner. We're going to grill. Do you guys want to come over? And we actually, like, we get to work with colleagues that are our friends at the same time. So when you do those gatherings, it's natural to, hey, what are you working on? What's your next show? And it's like, hey, well, let me show you. And then everyone just starts working. Or it's like, hey, bring some stuff over. We're going to paint tonight and watch a movie or what do something. And really? we just kind of, that's in like the organic way of it. Then formally, um, it would start as the first person would have whatever medium they're working with, either do a complete piece or do like just start it. And it kind of varied between person to person. Um, it's often Billy would just like start a painting and then he gave me like one of the canvases. And so 
then you get into deciding how do I work with this if this is a medium I've never worked with. So there were kind of um, like obstacles and challenges, um, but they were all good. It was like all like really fun experiments. Like, well, I normally do a lot of watercolor in a certain design, but I'm given a totally like really thick, very textured like canvas. Mm -hmm. And I don't typically paint textured like that. So you have to figure out how do I combine this and how do you still keep that original voice there? Add your own. And then what is it going to make together? And it's really scary, too, because um, you don't want to, like, mess up someone's right, bizarre. Right. <laughs> my, it took me so long to get started on my pieces. Like, I don't want to screw this up. And then, like, I'm like, Billy, I messed up your canvas, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I didn't want to do that. I, was I like, feel I'm, like I got lucky, though, because me and Kristen made our piece before this was a thing. And it mm. just kind of was able to just fit in with it, which was lucky, I feel like. But I'm looking forward to working more on new, new things. So who's the initial too. driving force behind this? I mean, Billy, uh, Billy Hensley, uh, he's a Chickasaw artist. And like, I luckily I just did an interview with him. So I wrote for, uh, for Art Focus magazine on Billy and the exhibition. And he talked about like that informal gathering, but then he talked about he just thought it would be cool in his head, like have like 10 artists work on one piece. Mm. And then it just kept growing. And then it only ended up being like, I think the max any piece has maybe has only four artists in mm. it. Um, because he said once it got kind of more like how Tom said, maybe he said it was a little chaotic or something like it's, um, it's hard to enter in that much all in one. So when you're individually sitting down with the piece, you have a little bit more focus mm -hmm. and, um, there was really cool, um, things that came out like, uh, Marvin McGay was talking about, he had never realized really how many different types of different colors and patterns that Margaret Roach Wheeler had in her weavings mm -hmm. until he was given her weavings. And then he was doing, um, like silk screening on top of it. And so even he and like he's a professor, he's been an artist for like well beyond all of us sitting here. And um, it was just so cool. All those different little things that everybody's learning about other people's art that you just have no idea. Um, so that was really cool. And that's how it started becoming more of an exhibition and more formal. And then we started writing like artist statements for it. And then all these curators like started hearing about it across the country and um, there's these like really well established, like bigger name artists all the way down to people that were still like, um, like still in college. Um, so we had like all this huge range and everybody just working together. And it was just very like culturally reflective for all of us to that community based. It's almost a way that you kind of step back is how Native Americans, First Americans, indigenous people shared information mm -hmm. and shared their cultures and artistry and how it kind of grew and how there's some symbols that are reflective i think throughout the country through various tribes i think that's it's interesting that you guys came up with this to collectively come together and create so what makes you continue this and and say okay well it started this way and now we're going to go this way and now it's as you mentioned blossomed into something that you really didn't initially think it was going to be uh, well i would say is it just growing organically and it's taken kind of a path of its own well what? well i think what it is is it you know it's um it's like a party, you know, it's like it's an initial group of people and then they tell one person and that person invites <laughs> yeah. another person. And so it was like, oh, my God, you know, it'd be really great for this. You should talk to, you know, such and such. And um, and then, you know, we incorporated people that I think some people I think Marcus Hammerman is a good example of that. You're because he does beadwork primarily, though he does do, um, you know, um, lots of multi uh, media, mixed media pieces, too. But. I thought it was cool that he was able to work his beadwork into a painting, um, which, you know, I think a lot of people when we started would have been like, well, don't reach out to Marcus. He's kind of too big of a name or he would be difficult to, you know, incorporate. But it was really interesting to see how that works. And I also like how we've maintained a very informal um, feeling about the show. Mm -hmm. Like I, it's when, we continue to do it and continue to grow it because it's like, hey, we're going to get together and have an opening. You should come hang out. And yeah. We all get to come and see each other. And uh, it's going to it's kind of an excuse to kind of revisit. And um, it is such a cool community that is very, um, I think, even keel and humble and everybody. Nobody's trying to big time anybody in the no, show. It's no one like, wants to be the star. No. Well, it's it would be hard to be because there's <laughs> not there's there's not a singular piece that is a single artist. It's right. they're all collaborative. So that's what I really love about it. So when you initially started to have more artists wanted to participate as it's grown? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it ha travel? they do that. And then it kind of just depends. Each gallery space is different. Um, so when we've been at two different places within the Chickasaw Nation, and then when we were at the Cherokee Nation, they probably had the most space in um, their plaza there for it. So it kind of just depends on the space we have, where it's traveling, and um, kind of like the intent of that specific show. Like um, right now it's in um, Sulphur, but next it's going to be going – Part of it, uh, it'll be split between Red Earth and then part of it will also be going to the Sovereign Show, which is a Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's a three-day show um, during Indian Market. So the show will be split up. And Dustin Mater, who's also in this sh like mm -hmm. the show with this, he'll be um, curating that, like, I guess, iteration of it. So it, it has all these different, like, uh, transformations that it'll go through. And potentially if, like, we sell a piece, then we have to decide at that time are we going to, like, at the end of that showing, does it go to the collector at that point? Or mm -hmm. does it have to wait until this exhibition is finished traveling? Do mm -hmm. we replace those images? Um, things um, that haven't all the way been worked out yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Learn as you go. Mm -hmm. Before we get too do uh, far down the road, uh, Natalie and Kristen, why don't you tell me a little bit about your stories and your background and how you're participating in this exhibition okay so for for myself per se i feel like tom and Kristen have been in this for a, a, a while and i feel like me as an artist i have i'm just now really stepping a toe into the professional artist side of this of showing my artwork and and being a part of this community when before i was very casually just kind of doing art here and there when i could and now i'm getting a lot more uh, mm -hmm. serious about it which is exciting because now i'm like really ready to stretch my wings and, right. and fly um but my name's natalie standing cloud i grew up in Tahlequah, oklahoma my uh, my dad's tribes are cherokee and creek i'm enrolled cherokee my mom's tribes are salish kootenai wenatchee and Caville, uh up northern and um, yeah, I've been drawing ever since I could hold a pencil, honestly. Um, and then as I grew older, I had friends and family who were like, you know, yay, you're pretty good at doing that. You know, will you do this for me or do that. And my grandmother bought me all these equipment, you know, all this uh, mediums and different pencils and things I had no idea how to use. So I, I would be <laughs> like, oh, cool. Thanks, grandma. And then kind of use it one time and then just kind of like toss it to the side, never pick it up right. again. Because I just I didn't really know that this was going to be my thing. I just thought, oh, this is something I like to do on occasion. And sometimes I'm kind of good at it. Right. But I never like really pursued uh, art classes or anything like that. Not until I got into college, really. But um, as I grew up, I thought my thing was going to be the uh, I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be on Nickelodeon and right. Disney and all that stuff. And uh, while I was growing up, I was really focused on the, the acting part of that. And it wasn't until I got older, until I got into college, really, that um, I started to find my my spot in the world as an artist, really. And so it wasn't until um, I actually initially dropped out of college that I picked up a tattoo apprenticeship and um, got licensed. And now that I'm a full time tattoo artist, I feel like I've done more tattoos than I've done finished <laughs> artworks completely, like honestly. Hey. But um, but it's really just like brought me back to this art world in this community that I'm really excited to, to get to know and uh, build a relationship with. And so I want to thank Tom and Kristen for bringing me in today and, you know, just like really introducing me to this to this world, uh, truly. And um, I'm just really excited to be here, honestly. That was very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, hello, to us, I'm Yacht Kristen Gentry. Um, hi, my name is Kristen. I'm Choctaw Sia. I'm Choctaw. And I was born right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we're recording at. And my family is from the southeastern part of the state in the Choctaw Nation. My family is in like Clayton, Big Lake area. Um, so, that's where all my Choctaw comes from. And then when I was in high school and junior high, like I was on this like heavy, like track right toward, I wanted to be basically a band director, music instructor. Um, so I was really heavily focused in music. And by the time I got to like my senior year of high school, you get down to like a lot of electives. And I was like, oh, I'll right. take an art class. Um, I'd actually grown up going to art festivals all the time. My grandparents were wood carvers and my mom um, was seamstress. She sewed. And so even when I like I was like one month old, I literally I was born in September and then my mom had already taken me to Oktoberfest in Tulsa. <laughs> so it's so like growing up along the river, like all those Tulsa Mayfest. Um, I would go to the state fair with my grandparents. They would do the my grandfather is a founding founder for the Eastern Oklahoma Woodcarvers Association. And that's a, a pro or I guess an organization that's still in um, in progress today. So that's really cool to see like years later. And then my dad was an architectural draftsman. So for me growing up, there was a whole wood shop all the time. There was like tons of drawing, like all the models my dad would be building. And then I'd have that giant like architecture paper, the big rolls. Right, and right. So I just had access to art supplies. Um, and my mom and like always talks about like it was always making little books and like illustrating and 
Um, I just always liked doing that. I never really kind of like not. I didn't see that as a career. It was just like everybody does it. Like my whole family does art. It just wasn't like a career necessarily. Um, so when my senior year of high school, I ended up, um, I'd actually received a music scholarship, but, um, decided to stay at home in the Tulsa area. And I, um, I was like, well, I really like art The like I had started at community college. And so the campus I was at didn't have the music program. So I was like, well, I liked that. Um, so let's try that. And like within my first semester, I just really fell in love with it. Um, it was like music. I had to work so, so very hard to really, I felt like progress in that. And then art, it was just so natural. Um, and it was something that really like calmed me. Um, I'm very outgoing and very loud, like very talkative. And it's one of the only times that like, I have a real like kind of peace <laughs> in my brain. And, um, <laughs> it just became, um, like it just really like changed my life and that to like, give me a moment to slow down. Um, and at the same time, um, uh, being raised where I was, I was so far away from the Choctaw Nation. I would only travel there like a couple times a year. So I wasn't really raised really uh, traditional in my Choctaw heritage. I actually, because of living in Tulsa, I probably was exposed, not probably, I was exposed to a lot more Creek <laughs> traditions mm -hmm. and spent a lot more time. And like, I'm sure I probably know a lot more Creek words in the beginning than I did Choctaw initially. So in college, I really worked to focus on that myself and my art became a way to really explore my culture, really mm -hmm. learn who I was and <clears throat> really see. Um, I almost immediately, like within the first couple of years, I really realized like the whole looking at um, like native art and media, everything that was portrayed was so Southwestern. Correct. Right. Um, Everyone <clears throat> thinks of Native American Very Pan-Indian. Yes. And Apache and Navajo. And it's like. Plains. Yeah. And then um, <clears throat> I just <throat> fell in love with like how nature based and mm -hmm. how um, much gardening was already important to me. And then seeing how much that was in my culture. And then I just really focused on that within my art. And I can see that. <clears throat> I can see that in the, your works now that I'm hearing you talk about it. It's beautiful. <laughs> no, really though. Like she does have beautiful florals and, and geometric yeah. patterns that are connected to her culture in her way. And I can see that like thinking back on your artwork and seeing it in my brain right now, you do a beautiful job putting mm -hmm. that together. Well, thank you. Yeah. And I don't know if like everybody experienced this, but then once I started learning like things, I naturally just like doodled in class, like mm -hmm. all these different like patterns ended up being identical to like ah. mound builder designs and it. like not that swirls or like, you know, like just like Southeastern, but like the specific ways like they were arranged and it right, was just like right. somehow that was just like innately inside me. And mm -hmm. it was just a really nice confirmation that I was on the right path for being an artist. And I ended up doing art education instead of music ed. So I still became a teacher. Um, so I still got to do like what I wanted to do. And I still get to teach now. I do like community based off and on now. And um, I like to curate. I like to create that community. I like to give people opportunities to have an art space that may have not um, opportunities to wherever they're at with their culture, learn more about it. Um, I don't like the gatekeeping. Um, I've been really thankful to have a lot of good people that have been amazing with me as an adult to help me learn my own culture. Mm -hmm. so. so one of the purposes after this had started and you started gathering your friends, hanging around and painting and doodling and <laughs> kind of uh, working with each other and the collaboration, was the end goal to sell the pieces or just to see where it went? Like collectively, like, well, we'll just get on board and do it and work together and start painting and creating and... It, I don't think this has ever was like we had it was so informal. I think we just wanted to to show people what we've done. I don't think I really like that. I, I yeah. for myself, when I start trying to create for money, it dilutes the creativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I try to stay away from that. So I like how this kind of just organically came together without that thought of trying to monetize it. Well, I mean, because it kind of goes back to the original ideas. I mean, we didn't ever think of showing those paintings right. that we made in, in garages right, that, right. you know we we're just like hey we're just you know oh this is a you know this is something i think would look really cool with that you know uh it was just very art for art's sake mm -hmm. and with this sh with this show um we decided to kind of take that concept and then say okay let's actually try to make some stuff um, that is good, mm -hmm. and, yes. then, and then exhibit it. Speaking of um, good, yeah, because some of it, like, don't let us fool you. Some of it was like terrible, and like, <laughs> like it, mm, it, it's been no, it was, it was it perfect, perfect on the first try. Yeah, yeah. All Picture of them. perfect. <laughs> yeah, first quality. try. No <laughs> mistakes. No reworks. 
Yeah. That's how art is. <laughs> Real so art. So everyone participating, <laughs> is everyone a First American tribal citizen in yes. various nations? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, and not just Southeastern. There, uh, we mm-hmm. have Navajo. We have like our Northern tribes, Northeastern, Southeastern. We have all across. Oneida. Oneida, yeah. Yeah. So when everyone started coming together, collaborating, was indicative that it needed to be some form of Native American artistry incorporated? Or was it just no. whatever someone started installing and painting or creating? Like, I think it was more the, the artist and the person. So um, it was like, you know who's really cool to work with? Or, mm-hmm. you know, who's re- does something really interesting? You know, it wasn't like... You know, we should get that person because what he does would go well with this. Mm-hmm. It was more like, oh, they're really cool to work with. And a lot of the pieces came together, uh, you know, with people who already kind of had a network or connection. I did work with Billy. Obviously, he was the uh, originator. Um, Hoka Skinnador is one of the other artists I work with. And he and I have just known each other a long time. And um, he was like, hey, I was asked to do the show. I know that you're in it. I've got a couple records. Do you want to paint them? I was like, yeah. And it was just very informal mm-hmm. and a lot of fun. But I've, I've known Hoka's work for a long time. I've always been a fan of his work. I have lots of it. And so I was like, yeah, I can ruin one of your paintings. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, it was interesting to kind of take what he had done. And then uh, that was, I think, the biggest challenge for me um, of this was taking what had already existed and then putting my spin on it without, A, ruining it, uh, and B, just putting something that had nothing to do with it on there. Like I wanted it to to kind of be um, synergistic and, and make sense as a as a single piece. Mm-hmm. Um, because sometimes it, it did end, just end up being like, oh, it's a really cool painting. And then there's this one part over here that somebody just kind of slapped <laughs> on. <laughs> and I think that was the goal for this was that to make these pieces cohesive. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's sometimes difficult to do. And I, I realized I've never, I was never the originator. I was always mm. took pieces. I think mm. I'd be a little nervous of like, it's like, Hey, don't ruin this. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, uh, but then again, like everybody we're working with, I, I trust uh, a lot as artists. Um, so, so is there different types of art forms like clay beading, painting? Mm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 There's weaving, uh, yeah. printmaking, um, like all the different types of paint, oil, acrylic, watercolor. Beadwork. Beadwork, yeah. yeah. What was ours? Like wood? Ours is yeah. cedar, yeah. Cedar so wood. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how many pieces are in the collection thus far? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think they're about 30. I want to say like closer to 40 now. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the other thing is people are... You know, in, in true Indian artist fashion, it's like, oh, that show's been up for two years. Hey, I have that piece finished. So can we add it to the thing still? Can we still get that in? Okay, yeah. Cool. So by our third opening, <laughs> yeah, typically, <laughs> like, gallery spaces and, like, you would not be able to be so, so lax with how it is. But by, even by our third opening, we were, we still had two new pieces that entered. <laughs> I won't name the artist. <laughs> we all know who it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of them I worked with. So. Yeah. So you mentioned that uh, some of the pieces are actually selling. So are they are they being moved to the collector, to the buyer, or are you keeping them to a certain amount of time? Um, that's something that Ashley and Billy are working on right now. They haven't mm-hmm. made that decision if they're going to sell and have us replace mm-hmm. or keep it all together, and it's that's the only show. Like, we don't know yet. Oh, okay. But, yeah. So how did it come together to actually, once you started coming together and doing what you needed to do and being having fun doing this, it's like, okay, we're going to actually pull this together and do an exhibition. How did that, how did that formulate? Uh, well, it was, the pieces started with the idea of, of, of doing an exhibition. Mm-hmm. So that was always the end goal. Um, fortunately, um, you know, Billy has some connections and uh, we're working with Ashley, who's at a, a very um, meticulous person, very excellent at scheduling and wrangling artists. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Um, it's fortunate that we have that kind of administrator for the show that is able to kind of set things up and because yeah, it's a bunch of unorganized artists running it otherwise. <laughs> we, mm. we would not be in, you know, eight different locations and venues otherwise. So Yeah, that, I was wondering how you guys were pulling this off because I was like, I know you guys are both busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How is this happening? There's kind of like a whole team that works on it. So like Billy's like the main curator and then Ashley's like our exhibition manager. Cool. 
um, I kind of help them do kind of like this, like a little more PR. Um, I've gained, like I've had um, some of the artist gain or the uh, gallery space gains. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of help all of them. And then we're also looking, we're doing grants. We're writing grants now. So a lot of that is, a lot of it's Ashley and me. <laughs> and then we kind of just tell, hey, we tell Billy and Dustin, this is what we're going to do. Right, right. Yeah. So the women are in charge. Yes. <laughs> As, As they should they be. Should be. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's part of our culture. <laughs> yeah. And now we get to go, we're going North Carolina, Texas, so New exciting. Mexico. Yeah. Uh, that was going to be my next question. What is the spectrum of where you guys are going to be traveling to? And is there an end date? The, like now we have our last space, but that may not be the very last like stop on it. Mm -hmm. um, right now it's finishing in Santa Fe, New Mexico at um, Sovereign. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not at Sovereign, at Fahrenheit um, with um, a curator named Greg who works with all of us too um, during the summer as well with uh, his show called Sovereign during Indian Market. So it's going to, part of the show be there in the summer and then it's also ending there later in the year. So it's going to have its own show in Santa Fe, which that alone is really important for like all of us in that. Absolutely. Um, it's a big part of being a native artist, having your art shown in Santa Fe still and um, I'm really excited for any of our artists that have never done that before, what that'll do for their careers. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking about me. <laughs> yeah, so it is exciting to have right. something outside of myself that I've made be shown across the country because I'm used to the only thing that I've really shown that's walking around right now are my tattoos. But but like finished finished artwork by itself is, I don't know, it's it's something that I haven't really done before and it's exciting. So I'm excited to, to make more, honestly. Absolutely. So is there going to be a phase two? Do you think this is going to be an annual event? Oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I think this was something that, uh, as a concept, will continue informally. Um, and this certainly isn't the first show that this network of group of mm -hmm. people have put together or been involved in together. So in some form or fashion, we'll continue to do this. I don't. I honestly don't know that you, uh, you actually talked to Billy more recently about this. Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, we all started making the pieces like within the last little bit, I guess, you know, we're in 2020, like 2021, the end of it. I mean, these ideas were happening during pandemic. pandemic mm -hmm. Yeah. So out of that too, we're, so we're like isolated. How do we, you know, interact right, with right. our community? Mm -hmm. So another one of the positives <laughs> from COVID. <laughs> um, so that concept. So right now, like by the time it gets to that end stop, it'll actually be next year. So that makes it a two year span already. So I don't know what it's doing. Like, yeah, I don't know if Billy even knows where we're going yeah. <laughs> after after Santa Fe. I don't know if that's the end. I know we've looked at um, they want to actually do maybe an exhibition catalog, write a book. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. um, I happen to now work for a native publishing company. So, <laughs> so we can look at that. Right. Well, yeah. there are a couple other stops that are after Santa Fe, too, well, that well, are hits, still TBD, I think. Yeah, well, it hit Santa Fe twice in two uh, different versions. One is during Indian Market and then one as just a, like an exhibition. Okay. Yeah, so you may not have known that. Yeah. <laughs> Our schedule gets Guess updated. What? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I, I don't know where it is now. So that's fine. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, we are? That's great. Oh, I, okay. So, yeah. Nellie, you're the newbie uh, to this collective. <laughs> what inspired you to be a part of this? I mean, uh, really honestly, Kristen brought yeah. me into it because they, we had a couple pieces that we had already collabed on before. And with her, how did you make the etching? Because even though it was my design that I created digitally, I didn't have the means to make it physically, although mm -hmm. she did. Yeah. So I have a laser cutter. Um, so typically I started out with it to do acrylic jewelry. And then I realized I could cut wood. I can etch metals. Um, and I, I want to use, so I try to use as much like cedar as I can when I'm doing things. And the design that, uh, the four direction sign that Natalie drew and then digitally created, um, she's also tattooed that design on me before. Mm -hmm. um, I did that with um, one of the other artists in the group, uh, Kendra Swafford. She's in our exhibition. And then Candessa Tihi, even though Candessa's not in this exhibition, she does other exhibitions with our group. So it's just a very, um, it's a meaningful symbol anyways to all mm. of us, all of our like Southeastern mound builders. And um, we had that design. Um, and so to be able to make it into cedar, to have it like physically hold that, right. is, it's like really special. And like I even like rubbed some more cedar oil into it. So to have that kind of like blessing medicine there in our show, I think is really important too, to bring in, you know, the really important parts of our culture um, that we still get to have today that we right. have, that our ancestors kept alive for Keeping us. those symbols going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an important part of our DNA. 
uh, that we're continuing to tell the story just because we've had first contact and we've been disbanded and such. Our story is mm-hmm. continuing to be involved as Native people, First Americans. W- did did participating in this as a collective and collaborating with other artists, did it challenge each of you? And did you feel like you took risk in your own craft? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, I've already kind of talked about my challenges in doing the pieces i think it was more fear of like i don't want to disappoint the artist that i'm working with like, i feel like i'm trying to deal with my imposter syndrome <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like i don't know why i still have it but i, I still do because like i i just i even though i've done so many finished tattoos like i said mm-hmm. i haven't done so many finished artworks and i you know witnessed tom and christian with their finished things are framed and good to go and i'm just like what do i have like something right. i've done like 10 years ago maybe and so being in this collective really has a, um, in a way, in both ways, like the imposter syndrome still is there, but it's also in a way almost healing that imposter syndrome because I uh, am deserving to be with this group of people yes. and I deserve to be here and I have the talent and I have the worth and I'm excited because this is validating for me right, and right. it's empowering and, I'm, and it, it gives me the uh, energy and motivation to create more finished fine arts. Don't look too closely at that finished fine art, especially <laughs> just for mine. Hey, my skateboards in my yeah, living room. Yeah, no, and, well, you know, I'm saying, like, I know that, like, um, uh, I, I will say that I have looked up to a lot of artists, and then when I've gotten up really close to their work, I'm like, oh, you have pencil lines too? Yes. <gasps> yes. I, You're human? Oh, I'm a wow. human. Good. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It is one of those things. Yeah. It, it does take a little bit. Thank the more you, Tom. You kind of look closer and stuff. You're like, oh, good. I'm, it's not perfect. And All right. Well, let me just take you off my pedestal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't want to be there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a cool one for me is um, I got to collaborate with Marcus Ammerman. So being a Choctaw artist, he's just, I don't, I don't want to discredit anybody else in the show, but in my mind, like Marcus is like the most like high, I guess the most well known, mm-hmm. I guess out of our group. And so, um, so we are using my laser again. So he did these like uh, Scrabble tile bracelets and they were all like funny sayings or tribe names. And so with him, we actually discussed what we were going to make in a very short conversation, <laughs> very, like very relaxed and or, like organic as well with him. And he's like, well, I don't want to, he's like, I want to do words and either like Either you use syllabary, use Osage like syllabary, use Cherokee syllabary, or do like words in Choctaw. So mm-hmm. that's what we did. He wanted me to try to find words um, that didn't just use English. So one of the words I did that was a special collab for me, um, I did like Sushki, which is my mother, not just mother. Mm-hmm. And it has some of our special um, like symbols in there that's not just English like letter characters. And then we did some, we did some in syllabary too. And like, and then when I got the pieces back, I realized like he had cracked one and one was like glued back together. And I was like, <laughs> that was kind of that whole thing. And I was like, oh, wow, this is like the most amazing bead worker. And then like, oh, well, he has mistakes too. And mm-hmm. it was like, I was like, oh, I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling Marcus you said that. <laughs> well, it's like everybody's going to know. <laughs> I love did, you, Marcus. <laughs> did anyone become very territorial? It's like. Oh, don't touch it. I don't um, think so. Uh-huh. I think that was the whole point of it was almost to see how many people could touch it and mm-hmm. just to kind and of take the, take the artist out of their comfort zone, probably. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I think all of us are so used to working singularly. Yes. Right. And uh, like yes. having a vision and like, because I, I guarantee you, Billy could not have foreseen what I was going to do with the canvas that he gave me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I didn't know. And I kept, I, I second guessed myself so many different times just because again, I was like, well, how this, this isn't what I would do. And I, I don't really paint over. So it was, a, it was a totally different thing. Right. And so I was fortunately very happy with the result. Um, but the whole time I was worried about that. And do you, you think know. it would have been different if you were the base and he was the icing I yeah guess? Because, and, and i because i would have the same attitude he would i'd be like i don't care dude whatever you do is going to be mm-hmm. great and like i have that confidence in all, all the artists that i work with and not that i don't have that necessarily myself when i'm doing my own thing i think that i just don't want to disappoint the other person i'm working with is all mm-hmm. so like if I, my own stuff that i make i'm like yeah it's great because it's mine from the very beginning right, right but like when you're working with someone else it's just 
especially on that level, you just don't want to be the weak link. I don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't at least. And you don't want to make them look bad because you right. respect right. them and their yeah. art, and like you don't want to do anything negative to another. So person. There's a lot of trust going on here, yeah. right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, like, I got to also work with Hoka, and at that point in time, I had never met him. Like, I wasn't really familiar with his work, so when I got it, I was, like, I kind of just saw it as, like, an abstract background. And then, like, we became friends. Now we're friends. So, like, I gained a whole new, like, he was friends with most of the people in the exhibition. I mm-hmm. just happened to not know him. So that was another cool gain that out of it. That was your connection that you made. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's also when, like, I learned that Billy's also Choctaw. Like, I didn't know that until I just knew he was Chickasaw. <laughs> so, right, right. So we could learn different things about people and... Um, and now I get to joke about Hoka and say, like, I took, like, I finally made his piece a good piece of art. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's all because of you. And see, I was, one, I was one worried about ruining it. And you were just like, no, 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 I'm definitely going to improve it. I'm like, wow. I'm just, yeah. yeah. Just and, Natalie, totally. and Natalie, since now you've kind of gained that momentum of doing more artistry, are you dedicating more time to it? I am, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I am. Um, in a, I have uh, somebody coming down from Canada who is starting an exhibition at the Museum of Vancouver, and he's doing an exhi- exhibition over um, tattooing, right? Oh, and so, and so, what we're doing is he's coming down, taking full body pictures of one of my clients who have done like full. Uh, back and stomach tattoos on that are traditional and I'm also going to hope that I can send back with him this little silicone baby doll that I have that's meant for tattooing Uh and so I'm going to put tattoos on this little tiny baby doll for him to take back to the museum so people can see it like in person on like a microscopic level almost Mm -hmm. but um it's still tattoos but it's something that's like not on a living person right Right, it's like a piece and that's (laughs) you you could send a living person I mean I guess I could it costs (laughs) a little extra money for the plane ticket why not but I mean I'd I'd be willing to send somebody but um but yeah like I'm really excited about creating Vancouver, yeah, let me chop, chop the arm off there. Right. <laughs> one ice, you know? Yeah. You know those, like, tiny little dolls that people make, and they don't always call them dolls, like, but I was like, I've never seen one with tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're always traditional. It's like a little cutie doll. You remember the little cutie doll? Right. Uh-huh. That's what it looks like, but it's made out of, like, silicone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it can hold ink, like, t- like t- t- tattoos, really? honestly. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. So since you guys started this, are you still coming together and talking things out and working and creating new things? Yeah, when's the next party? I want to go. Uh, we well, did one not too long ago. In, in Tahlequah, you missed that one. I know yeah. I did. I was, I was busy. A I'm a busy bee. When we were at Billy's not too long ago, and like you and I collaborated, and we had never collaborated before. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, we had a, again, yeah, we occasionally still get together. We have some dinner, pull out the paints, and you usually. Adult beverages? Oh, well, <laughs> Does it help? <laughs> I mean, whatever helps the creative process. <laughs> 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 Uh, that's top secret. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. That's secret. That's, right. Right. that's secret. Super secret. I mean, super we secret. We won't reveal our ceremonies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But it's always funny. The roster is always very robust, and then when you see the actual like, oh, there was another ten. No, about three. Okay, that's <laughs> come on. It's whatever. But sometimes it is a, a real full house, and um, I don't know. It's just it's always fun, and yeah. it's and it's always good. Um, kind of art catharsis because you're just doing it just for fun and not like oh, I got to crank something out for the show next week and mm-hmm. right, you know, right. I got to pay these bills right right and so for me I was uh, you know it's a chance to do not that I do anything <laughs> not weird but it's a to, like really you can't like put hey, yourself hey, in a box neither right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah keep it keep it open <laughs> keep yeah it weird. so it, it's it's a good to kind of stretch your legs every so often mm-hmm. I think. right right. Each of you, what do you think is an important factor of being a Native American artist? Mm, I I feel a responsibility to carry on our stories, our symbolisms through whatever I create. Not through everything I create, Mm -hmm. but um, definitely take some time to give that space. Yeah, I like to probably always, everything that Natalie said. (laughs) (laughs) Ditto. Um, And then I like to always have some type of educational, like inevitably we do that anyways, but like on purpose, like being like intentional about Mm -hmm. that. And um, I like to do uh, a lot of, I guess, exhibitions in the sense of I want to include like new artists, youth artists, um, just kind of be like a... I guess it's that anti mother thing. Like I want, I want to include everybody and I want everyone to kind of learn together. And like, we all like elevate at the same time. Mm -hmm. So using that part of our culture to me is really important in this, all all of the art process too. Mm -hmm. like doing it with other people. And, um, again, like I'm very against like the gatekeeping concept. It's about community and bringing people together. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you never know what people, like life is rough. Like, Mm -hmm. and, 
there's all kinds of like mental health. And so like if I can, you know, help somebody else, you know, that's always a good thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, wow. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you guys did cover so much of it. Uh, I would say when I approach my work, uh, usually it's to uh, inform- informally educate. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I work uh, for First America's Museum and encounter so much of the public that there's just so much basic information about Native culture out there that is still not common knowledge, just, Correct. you know, like, oh, I didn't know Native people all spoke different languages, yeah. or I was just like, wow. So for me, I feel like so many of my pieces are just basic information about Native culture in general, designed to kind of spur conversation through humor, um, because I've found that um, if you can make someone laugh, they're more than likely going to remember what you told them and mm-hmm. and kind of take that to heart a little better than, you know, kind of browbeating somebody. You're, you're, if you make them laugh, that's better than yelling at them. Right. Right, right. right. Or brighten the horizons and, yeah. and stuff. What has been the overall response and what have you each been surprised at the reaction of this collaboration? I think the overall response has been positive. Uh-huh. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody who's seen the show has been very impressed. And I think <laughs> I think a lot of people were just kind of surprised that we could – where people like pull ourselves off. together. Yeah, like, some people hey. just kind of like, wow, you you got we're this is allowed. We can do this. Yeah, right. Right. That, yeah. some, Cause that's kind of what my initial thought is. I, I didn't <clears> think we that's this was allowed that we could do this. You know, I, I always thought it was singular. Right. Mm-hmm. I never thought you we why couldn't we? There's no right. rules. Right. Make it up as you go along. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just um I don't know if I've been like I'm trying to think if I've been surprised. Um it's been like all like really good learning things. I don't know how like surprising it's been. It's been more, um, it's been more of like realization instead of a surprise. Like Mm -hmm. this was how it was supposed to be in Mm -hmm. a way. Um, it just, it's, I don't don't know. I can't think of the words. (laughs) Gadoogie. Working together. There you go. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, as people that are from a tribal culture, this makes sense. It's yeah. like, why don't we think about this before? <laughs> yeah. This is part of our DNA and how we live Yeah, because society is so singular, isn't it? Like it you, is. you only yeah. make your way by yourself. And like, if you were to have somebody else, it's like using that person. But mm-hmm. no, this is us making bridges and connecting with each other and, and helping each other grow in different aspects. Mm-hmm. And what I like about it is that this is one of the few opportunities um, to be in a show where it's not competitive. Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. Yeah. There's like, such a yeah. very like bad you're not crab in a bucket vibe when it comes to natives, yeah. unfortunately, right, right. because there is so much competition mm-hmm. and there is not so many shows where we can just be together and not compete. Yeah. And yeah. so since there's, since that's not there, you, you know, usually you're like comparing what you made yes. against everybody else Correct. and Correct. like trying to kind of judge yourself based on that. Well, here it's like, Oh, well, this is what we made and isn't that cool. Mm-hmm. And then what you made is really cool. And I like how your work complements their work. Oh, you're going to make me cry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but, no, it's that's, a beautiful honest, thing. I think it's that's, so beautiful. That's we need more of that. Of yeah. We really do. Because like that competition, man, it really chips at us sometimes. Yeah. It chips at community when there's too much competition. Absolutely. Because then you forget, Absolutely. no, this is about all of us. You know, yeah. yeah, like we do deserve our individual wins. But when you win, I win. Mm-hmm. And in this collective, I feel like we get that. And you're not just showing to the world as a single source. Mm -hmm. It's more Mm -hmm. of collective uh, as a a group source, which I think is unique upon itself. Yeah. And the beautiful artworks created, the styles, like they're not just one style. They're a Mm -hmm. mix of two different, three, four different people, you Mm -hmm. know? Well, that brings up a question. What have you each individually learned? Learned from yourself as self-respective, like looking inward, participating in this, and also from others that you've worked with? I feel like my art style, um, working digitally, I'm, I'm very like precise, Mm -hmm. especially with my tattooings, Mm -hmm. like straight lines and perfect circles and things like that are what I'm really good at. What I'm not good at is what Kristen's good at, which she's really good at like organic and flow and all these shapes and things like that, that just like live and go wherever they want to go. And I appreciate that, that about her, you know, and I, and I just, I don't know, I just like seeing two different sides of the spectrum and and trying to challenge myself to maybe go on her side of the spectrum and maybe she might want to try to get a little bit more on my side, you know, Mm -hmm. either way. Yeah. 
And then so like um, the first piece I uh, wanted to collaborate with Natalie to create something new was like this ghost piece she made um, with like that Cherokee uh, uh, tear dress at the bottom with the pattern. And it's um, people like even non-native people, they're very responsive to that image in itself. Um, she did such a strong, it's just the great design. So great. And then to have like uh, to take something because like we said, we can't really like pin people's like skin up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's you know, totally arms off and just frame the arm. They yeah. are doing that. But on that movie, the, ghost, <laughs> the ghost design that she's talking about was originally a tattoo I designed for my friend because yeah. she really liked the idea of this little ghost, just like a simple plain ghost being uh -huh. on a skateboard. But she's like, how can you indigenize this a little bit? And I was like, all right, well, let's see. It's, it's a ghost with a sheet. Um, what if we made the sheet like a ribbon skirt or something like that? Had like that little skirt bottom to it, you know, and, and that's kind of what I made. And Christian seen the the uh, imagery and she fell in love with it and was like, hey, can I can I use this? Can I do something with it? And I was like, sure. Yeah, go for it. And that's what we made. Yeah. And now like um, so when I originally did it, I would do it without the skateboard, mm -hmm. without the deck under there. But in this exhibition, I wanted Natalie's full design. So then it was. I don't normally have a lot of sculptural. I'm usually more just 2D painter. So I was like, well, how do I do this? I had to figure out a way like to attach. So that was, again, we were like learning these things. That's where I was like, how do I put watercolor on top of like other people's works that aren't watercolor? Mm -hmm. And then I also got to listen to like Dustin and Mater and Kendra Swafford talk about how they created theirs. Like they discussed what they were going to create. Um, whereas I was just given either I created originally or like people would give me something. I didn't mm. actually collaborate with another person on the concept. It came like we, so everyone did it slightly different ways right. too. Yeah. Yeah. So for our, our instance, what we made was already made and mm. would just kind of fit into the category. Mm. Now that we're here and we're discussing and I'm like kind of the newbie in here, I'm excited to work on something else right. knowing having this in mind. You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, like they could collaborate now. Yeah, I'm, yeah, come on, bring it, Tom. Let's go. Yeah, well, we kind of already did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> but we could do it again. No, yeah. We could do I all mean, three of yeah, them. We'll, stop with just once. Just, I'll, take, I'll take the design and you can paint it. Then Yeah. Then we'll go, yeah. Um, what did I learn? Uh, you know, I, I learned a lot just um, from our more informal gatherings, just watching people work mm -hmm. and watching how they do. Th because I'm self-taught. Um and all of my work is trial and error. So when you see somebody who's figured out something, you're like, oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's great. And I've been very fortunate to have a network of people that um, are very responsive and very free with their information um, and tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. So, it's, uh, you know, I've been fortunate to have those people help me in my career. So um, I definitely learn by observation and doing. And so... Um, you know, if I'm painting next to somebody and I'm like, oh, that, oh, okay, that's an interesting way to, and right. I don't know, I, I, that's, that's probably been the, the learning by osmosis type thing that that's probably been the, the most that I've learned from this, I think. Yeah. And, um, it was, we kind of talked about like, how is this show so successful? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't necessarily, if we thought about that per se, but it inherently must be because we keep getting different curators across the country. Right. That they just like the idea so much. And like, we're going there's to, the, a, there's a want for it. There's yeah. a need right, for right. it. Yeah. Which is like, really exciting. It is. Yeah. So like we're going to the university of North Texas. I've, I don't think I've ever even shown in Texas. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, right. Yeah. So that's, it's crazy to think that our, our names are, are traveling with the, with these pieces, you know, right. without us while we're at home. And it's going out there, you know, living for us. Yeah. Oh, that was something that's actually been cool about this show. So we are all busy people, like mm -hmm. all of us. Some of us are full-time artists and some of them aren't. Sometimes we do other jobs full-time and art part-time. So um, we have a lot of openings because it's traveling, which is nice. So different people can attend different things and we all trust each other. Like I would be totally fine if like I wasn't there and Natalie was like talking about my work or Tom was talking about my work. Um, typically... In an exhibition I've ever been in, it's always just a curator talking right. about us, right. or if we're not, or ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. we never typically have someone else, someone else like talking for us. So that's even been something new. Like, you know, we're all talking about Billy's work, and Billy's not here. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's talk about Billy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's such a nice guy. Yeah. So, yeah. How, so how many artists are there participating overall? There's almost two dozen. Almost two dozen. Mm -hmm. That's okay. nice. Yeah. Uh, from various sources throughout the state or nationally. Nationally. nationally yep wow yeah that's fantastic and they were just word of mouth getting involved or was just connections connections i think i mean, we did i mean we didn't put a call out or anything it was really just like 
this is the concept. And like I said, it was like a party. One person told one person and invited another. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I have a question now. Was there a process and who picked who to choose to work with? No. Or we just kind of... No, it was... Um, well, I think Billy... The original idea, honestly, I think Billy was going to start all of them and then give mm-hmm. them to people and then come back and see. And then it just became like, oh, well, I really want to work with such and such. Okay, cool. And it just happened. And so that's how... So different people's connections and bringing... Uh, you know, people in, that's mm-hmm. how this grew to almost mm-hmm. two dozen artists. And mm-hmm. so um, it wasn't as like organized, like you're going to work with this person, you're right, going to work no. with that yeah. person. We weren't assigned. Right. Anything. It kind of became like, so and Ashley and I, like we kind of looked at it and we realized there would be like a lot of something and we're like, we need a little more variety. So they would be like, okay, do that. Like, so there was a little bit, the artists may not have all known that, but we would be like, hey, um, we need you to like, we need more people or we need more paintings or we need more diversity or, um, and they're like, at one point, Billy's like, we just need more women. And I think mm-hmm. that, ah! was, I think that was the moment I was like, Natalie, hey. like, yeah. And he's like, Oh, I don't know. Like, I don't think he knew your work at that time. And mm-hmm. so then he got to see your work and he's like that. And then now he's like, uh, like talking about tattoos. Hey. And, yeah. <laughs> so it's just really cool to like all of that organically kind of created but then like we kind of shaped it as as best as we could right right (laughs) well and i think we're all well the the majority of us um have been enough shows or have curated shows to know what is overrepresented and Mm. what is already out there me being a little baby artist i don't really know (laughs) but you guys know and here i am learning with you (laughs) so well it, it was great because yes we definitely wanted to diversify not just because there were a lot of men involved at first. And that was just because we all socialized that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we're like, oh, you know who should bring in? Kristen. We should bring in Kendra. Mm-hmm. We should bring in, you know, mm-hmm. Margaret Roach Wheeler. All these all these women, we, we really consciously wanted to make an effort to diversify that as much as possible to balance it out. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I know in the shows that I've curated, that is always a part of my plan is like, we really need female representation uh, in, in native art, but just art in general. Um, and then, you know, outside of that, just as, as being as inclusive as we can, you know, um, with everybody. Mm -hmm. So would you say there, there is a, a collective story behind the exhibition? If there was a story, what would the story be? Who's gonna, who's gonna <laughs> it makes me think of, well, it was just making me think of that like quote, like Tom even has it as a sticker now that, you know, uh, American history is just a small part of Native American history, similar to Native American art, like art is just like, you don't even have to necessarily like pop art, like mm-hmm. we are contemporary art, like, like that's, I think that is a message that's like people are learning like organically through this exhibition that, um, like this is what we're doing today. We can, you know, right, like that, right. Because that a lot extension. of the pieces aren't just like leatherworks and you know baskets, like old, like what could be considered like old traditional artwork. Correct. You know, many of the pieces are con- contemporary. Mm-hmm. And uh, in myself and my artwork, I try my best to try to weave the contemporary um, pop art or c- culture with the traditional culture of, of Cherokees and our mm-hmm. stories and things like that. So. Yeah, and then you can even see, like, looking at, like, if you look at Micah's pieces um, and then his, like, relationship piece he did with Kendra, like, their two pieces together, um, it's almost like if you could look at, like, the the traditional flat style of painting in, like, a, like a modern contemporary way, like, a progression. That's kind of when I always, I always think of Micah's as that way, slightly, like, an abstracted, more contemporary, like, to, you know, that flat style. And then the way, like, Kendra does her glitching, those two mm-hmm. styles together, it was, like, this perfect. Perfect. I love her glitching. And like I had it backwards of who I thought worked first. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that was cool. Cause you like but they had us guess, like, and one of our artists talked, like, who do you think did what first? Who did the foreground and who did the background? And and it was funny, like oh, the artists, we were like the most wrong. <laughs> 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 so. That's cool though. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so has this uh individually inspired each of you to continue to collaborate with other artists out there? Oh, I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm always open to collaboration. Um, it's just, I think this was the first time where there was conscious effort put behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there was like, we want to do this. Let's, you know, make this happen. Um, and I've collaborated with artists just informally before. Um, but honestly, I, 
in a lot of what I do just because I'm constantly learning new stuff. I collaborate with artists just informationally, mm-hmm. um, you know, show me how to do this or, you know, can you answer this question for me or I'm trying to do this. How is the best way to do it? And so I feel like I collaborate a lot just because I don't know so much. Right, <laughs> so right. I'm always trying to find new stuff and new uh, media. And I think that's what I like about um, the genre of first American art is that it incorporates every other genre. And so when you say, you know, oh, oh I collect Indian art or Native American art or first American art, it's like, right. what does that mean? <laughs> like, is that <laughs> pottery, weavings, baskets, paintings, beadwork? And for me, it's a little bit of everything. Right, right. Um, so uh, that's just what I really love about working in this field is that it's just so self-encompassing and reflective of our contemporary culture. Mm-hmm. Anything else you two want to add? I just enjoy getting together, Yeah, really. You know, um, any other time that we could get together as Native people, it usually is like maybe like a, a dance or, you know, an event or mm-hmm. a dinner, things like that. But for us artists, this is our time to get together. And I, I really enjoy that. Now, usually it's that doesn't happen except for you're at shows when you're supposed to be working. Yeah. Like, you're like, right. like, hey, I'm going to, uh, can you come watch my mm-hmm. I'm gonna come mm-hmm. yeah. talk to my friends for a little while. So it, it is nice to have... Uh, those opportunities to network and and kind of catch up with each other to where we're not we're not there for other purposes right (laughs) right yeah like and um so for me I'm a single mom so like like getting to know Billy and his family like I was just at his house the other day interviewing him and then like our daughters are like playing together the whole time um and like they were funny because they were like trying to see which, like, because they both know some chick is on some Choctaw and they're mm-hmm. like little bitty. So it's just funny to watch like them use our language. And then, like, Billy and I noted, like, we didn't have that as little kids. Like, right. I didn't know any Choctaw when I was like six years old. Lots of reasons we can deduce from Indian removal and boarding schools <laughs> as why. Um, but like, that. You're starting to really witness the change right in front yeah. of you. That's for future generations. Yeah, and these ki- like all of our kids are gonna like see these exhibitions and see the pieces we're making and seeing that you don't always have to have like that competition, that negative mm-hmm. type yes. of competition. You can like literally learn together. And I know that sounds very like I don't know, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's true. Yeah, and like. I don't know. It's it's a great. It's like a. It's. I hate to say it's like a family. I don't want to say that, but it's, it's our community. <laughs> don't say it's a tribe. I didn't. <laughs> oh, no. It's a community. Oh my God. It's an artistic, creative community. Yeah. So doing this has it taken you out of your norm of the medium that you usually work in and kind of inspired you to do other. I've been working on a lot more paintings. Yeah, definitely. When I most of the time I'm on my iPad all the time. So even though I've gotten comfortable working with pixels, I want to get more uncomfortable working with paint. (laughs) I dabble so much in everything. So (laughs) um, it certainly reinforces that. Um, You know, I just started dipping my toe into metalwork and. That's a whole different set of tools yeah, right. and skills. Mm-hmm. And, you get yeah. really hurt. And- <laughs> yeah, I, I wear really thick gloves. I, I learned that trick Good. early. <laughs> so um, I, have, I used to work for Tom, and so mm. he always had this thing about people, if you paint a buffalo, he can sell it. <laughs> and I'm pretty, like, most people know I'm a like, floral painter. I paint, mm. pl- like, plants and different things. Um, and so with this exhibition, like, I got to do, like, I did both because in – Billy had done a lot of buffaloes. He swears he's not going to paint anymore <laughs> buffaloes. <laughs> Until I so, sell it. So that's what I. Um, so that's what I did in my piece with him. I was like, I wanted to keep that alive. So what I do is a lot of replicated patterns. So I did that. I did a buffalo mm-hmm. pattern. And so then I did another piece with that, like after that one, and that piece sold like almost immediately. And I was well, just like, told you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Hey, I got Thomas a buffalo correct. for you. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I, that that did come about from a conversation with an artist. He wanted to know how he could, you know, increase his sales quickly. And um, I jokingly said, pay me a buffalo. I'll sell it. And he did. And I sold it <laughs> immediately. And then, like, I think we're on our, like, 15th buffalo. Yes. Right? Can we just and have so, a show of just buffalo? <laughs> yes. Everybody's different well, individual I, actually, buffaloes. Actually, I did do a piece of that. And it's just this this herd of buffalo running on this really nice uh, horizon. 
And um, the title of it is uh, Paint Buffalo Have a Career. Yeah. And <laughs> what I love is that so many people are like, oh, I really love this piece. And then they look at the title, they're like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not bad. I'm just saying it is. No. It's a thing. It's like, I was like, Buffalo and Scissor Tails right now in Oklahoma. Yeah, they're so in. They're yeah. so yeah. Oklahoma. I mean, I'm just saying, like, if that's tales. what I, I, you know, um, but I also recognize that as a trap. For artists too like mm-hmm. and i try not to do that i don't want to be the i don't want to rest on the like well i could crank out a buffalo and sell it i right. you know because for me i'm fortunate that i have the freedom that my full-time job kind of is in this field too so i get to play where i work mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and so my artwork isn't what I depend on for my livelihood. So I'm able to really say, look, if I want to make something and I'm going to invest the time to make it, I want it to be something that I want to make Mm -hmm. and something that I want to, you know, be reflective of what I want to be. I'm not a full-time artist and I respect those artists that, you know, they get up and they paint eight hours a day and they crank out work hundred percent respect that I, you know, um, but for me, like I want the weird ideas I have out of my head. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's where my artwork Same comes here. from. So, Same here. So it's like, okay, well, and if, if it's not in service of that, then, you know, I just, you know, really want my stuff to be different. I don't want to kind of get in a rut of like mm-hmm. making the same thing over and over right, again. Right. Or making what you think sh- people want to see. Right. right. And, and I think, you know, I, I've, I've had this discussion a lot and I think it, I think it's true that, you know, um, so many native artists are driven by the market, uh, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's what they make, what they paint, the size they make it, you know, it's it's driven by how can I sell this? And I don't think we'll ever know the the real uh, potential of native art until you remove that, which was one of the great things about the show point. is like we never again didn't start with the idea of making sellable marketable pieces these are like well this is what we want to make yeah and so that's what makes this show you kind of dictated unique. yeah mm-hmm. yeah and you know we weren't like well we got to make it small so um collectors will buy it you right know? right or right. we've got to you know use these colors because that's what's you know popular it's just mm. there's no rules yeah right. and so um when you remove that retail component um you you're really just left with like, this is what we want to make. And so that's what I really enjoyed about the show. Interesting. Have you guys thought about doing a public art installation as a collective? I'm just throwing it out there because I think that would be amazing. <laughs> They well, have these, I, mean, this we force of <laughs> I mean, if you really want it, I mean, right. we have graphic designer, we have people that can make digital art that hey. would help with that. Mm-hmm. I just think, you know, with the amount of creativity that collectively you brought together, that would just be a huge impact, I think, into Oklahoma City, to Tulsa, to any mm. uh, public art, urban, or rural environment that you have all these, what do you say, about two dozen artists participating, mm. doing something as a single force. Just well, throwing an idea out there to you guys. We'll tell the Arts Council. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's like, uh, so what's actually behind the name Collective Wisdom? Who thought of it and is there a meaning behind that? Or just So it's the collective wisdom of all of the different First American tribes, um, us, the descendants mm-hmm. of those tribes coming together, what we are bringing collectively, like all of that knowledge, everything that goes into each of us individually, we're bringing it all into one collective. What can all, when all of that is brought together, what can you create? And A powerful source. <laughs> yeah. Powerful force. Very unique. Yes, absolutely. Any uh, closing words of wisdom from each of you? Um, Don't drink your paint water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, please don't. That's a good one. Water. That is, yes. My Again. No. Worth it. Glass. Don't be afraid to get messy yeah, and definitely. make mistakes. Yeah. Um, Keep drawing. I, try different mediums. You yeah, try. try different. Try all the mediums. Yeah. Don't be afraid to fail. But pieces it, can be purchased online all the time um, from the Collective Wisdom so, website. We okay. have. Uh, we have. What's the website address? <laughs> no. We could, you could this find your it on Facebook. <laughs> Let's find out. Yeah, see, I was just making a joke, but no, uh, um, <laughs> I, I it is one of those things where it is a rare opportunity because um, to get so many of these artists that um, put their hands on a single piece, I mm-hmm. mean, um, it's rare to see collaboration like that. 
now because yeah, very um, unusual and a rarity. Well, because it's so competition driven or you know sales driven, it's people don't want to necessarily share. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I think that's why um, I was such a fan of the process of this um, because it was just uh, informal and relaxed and just a different a different vibe than the than the normal uh, art scene. Okay, perfect. Well, Natalie, Kristen, Tom, it was a pleasure to have you on the show, and I thank you so much for being here today. Happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you.